here. Oh, this is one. Yeah, talking about politics. So, talking about politics. So, this is um taken from the Fire and the Kid episode number six one six, and essentially it's Brendan Shaw declaring that he will be voting for Donald Trump in the upcoming election. Now, it's not necessarily a don't Brendan Shaw issue this, but more so a question to people in general, especially people in the states. Do you really care or does it really bother you at all when people that you follow or people that you look up to vote um, um, vote for somebody that you're not going to vote for or have kind of opposing political views to your own? I know it's different now in the in the States because things are so tense in the US. It feels like um, you're on a knife edge. I think whoever wins, you know, Biden or Trump, I don't think either of the losing team is going to go out quietly right um you know of course race relations are all-time high uh well racial tensions it feels like especially on the internet um, the stuff that's happening in portland is a madness like there's so many things happening so many layers uh of stuffs of course hollywood has been thrown into complete disarray celebrities are freaking out online don't know what to do with their free time they're stripping naked telling you to vote they're doing all sorts of nonsense so i wonder but I would like to know like what happens when you hear somebody you look up to and they come out and say, oh, I'm voting for that guy who you completely hate. Do you delete all their content and stuff that you're a fan of them of? Or, or cause in Europe it's different cause we just don't talk about politics openly that like cause as much as Americans do, right? Um, it's sort of something you kind of keep private or to yourself or to a select group of people that you kind of speak about those things too. But it seems like in the US, everyone just flings around or wears very proudly whatever party affiliations they're with, even if they're not, you know, an active, you know, even if they're not kind of actively participating in politics, they're sort of wear whatever party they're supporting very proudly on their chest, you know, on their bumper stickers, whatever it may be. So I wonder if this is a bigger deal in the States than it would be in the UK. Because I know if somebody I looked at in the UK came out and was a Tory, I wouldn't necessarily give a shit, right? Um, as long as I get the creative output that I've kind of known that I've kind of come to expect from that person and the quality doesn't sort of d kind of like, yeah, it's a Dave Rubin thing. I can remain a fan of Dave Rubin even if you support somebody that I don't support politically, as long as the show remains good, right? The moment the show level starts to decrease or the message starts to get muddied, or I feel like he's kind of grifting and trying to, you know, play up to that base and the work suffers, that's when I'm out. That's kind of my mark on it. But let's see what Brendan Shaw has to say regarding his opinion on Trump and the up and coming elections. Ele elections. Elections. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Typical that I'd kind of mud muddle up my words when I'm playing a Brendan Shaw clip in it. <laughs> it's contagious. But anyway, let's see what he has to say. You hear him talk about Trump and funding, you're like, oh, like the he makes sense. funding? He makes sense. It'll make you just be like, oh, fuck. It'll just make you think, you know? Because, like, with me, with voting, it's all about me personally. Like, certain people are going to vote on things that's important to them, whether, you know, it's not, I, I don't like Trump or Biden. I don't like either guy. Copy that. So, mm -hmm. for me, what affects me is their tax laws, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to vote based off tax laws. Mm -hmm. Well, the biggest tax cut for me would be Trump, right? But how big is the tax break, really? Because I've looked into a bit of it, and it doesn't really, again, this is me talking from an outsider's perspective, but it seems like it falls within the, five to 12 percent bracket in terms of you know the difference between both guys i guess i think i think if i'm not mistaken um biden has one of those tax things where you only get taxed a certain amount you only get taxed a certain percentage if you earn up to a certain amount right that sort of conf confusing thing that he does and i guess trump has got a bit more of a blanket easy to read if you've got money i'm not going to tax you high sort of idea behind it but i wonder if that's if any of you guys know, can kind of lend more credence to what he's talking about here. So but with Biden's plan, it's crazy. Mm. But when you hear in Trump's uh, funding towards the military, well, I'm going to vote for that, too, because I believe in a strong military. Mm. So when you hear Tim Kenny talk about it mm. and he goes, you know, you can vote for you want, because as far as military go, there are going to be a lot of them are pro Trump, because when Obama was in uh, office, he was very reserved, wasn't given the military funding, and ISIS kind of flourished, started popping up all. And to borrow a very apt used uh, Kanye quote, you know, Brennan's got a lot of cool shoes. He knows a bit about MMA, but what the hell does he know about the military? Why would the military um, spending be a deciding factor in his choice for who's the next president of the United States? The tax thing I kind of get, right? He's newly rich. He's got some money. He wants to keep the money. It is what it is. But the military thing, like, what was somebody in his family in the military did he serve I, I i don't know what's this or maybe that's an american thing again 
like do do people vote based like if you were going to vote for a candidate wouldn't it be vote wouldn't you vote on them based on the things that actually impact you in some way shape or form whether you had you know you came from a military family or you served yourself um but just you know just being a guy and just deciding i'm going to vote for this guy because he's going to spend more on the military is very bizarre especially considering what's going on in the world but hey i don't know all over it was trump came in gave us the funding mm -hmm. and what he says release the hounds was like yeah there's gonna be some casualties but do what you want to beat isis you know how long it took our special forces to beat isis mm -hmm. three months that's a again i'm not very politically minded but i'm assuming that's a very oversimplification of a very complex issue that probably was not the you know not one person can sit there and say oh yeah i was the one responsible for defeating isis i think every president sort of like um you know since maybe isis inception played some sort of role in eventually defeating them and i would assume just things changing um other people getting involved deaths i don't know i'm sure it's just not just trump giving them more money and that's why they defeated isis that's a very rah rah sort of like you know um america sort of way of looking at things i'd imagine maybe i'm not right i don't know Three months instead of the four years with Obama with the proper funding and capabilities, our military is the baddest on earth. It took them three months. Mm. Shout out to ES ES. That makes me proud to be American. Is, is. That's ISIS. I but if you, Why shout you don't want to shout out ISIS. <laughs> Why are you shouting out ISIS? Can we edit that? No, I was, yeah, yeah. no, because we defeated no, we them. We def no, we defeated them. No, no, nah, I'm with the military. No, no shout out to ISIS. <laughs> no, 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 no shout out. Also, if we so, yeah, um, Shorb is a Trump fan. It, we, it shouldn't be surprising really i think we've heard him sort of like dancing around that a few times um it definitely goes a long way it definitely says a lot more about the show that he's starting to say this sort of stuff now um you know the show's obviously waning um due to all the other controversies that have sort of surrounded it with brent with sorry with brian callen's um sexual assault allegations and whatnot and obviously I'm assuming that is that article still going to come out regarding the comedy scene that someone in, in, in the Los Angeles time was threatening to publish. If that's true, everyone's still on tender hooks. Everyone's still sort of like on their, you know, still sort of uh, watching their shoulders and making sure they um, don't get themselves in necessary trouble. But there's also the aspect of making sure that people click on your videos and, you know, um, comment and stir sort of controversy up. And I think, you know, sometimes maybe dipping your feet in the political landscape especially in america is a great way to sort of get engagement and get people to contact and sort of like you know throw hate your way personally i think the show's probably been dealt a bit of a lifeline with the addition of um what's his name malik and Chappelle. i think they've been great additions to the show so much so i think this was actually i watched that show in four and i really enjoyed it i think that was probably one of the better ones they've done in a while um the chemistry between the the three of them is getting a little bit better Brendan's still a little bit tetchy. It feels like he doesn't necessarily know how to talk to black people that well. But that's just a, my reading from the outside. He doesn't banter that well with them. Um, he doesn't, he gets a little bit uncomfortable when they sort of like do their own inside jokes and they sort of laugh hysterically, like, you know, black guys do in general. Um, he doesn't know really what to do himself, but he's, he's slowly getting there. And I think um, they've sort of been helped with their sort of like laid back, laissez faire, jovial attitude. The fact that they're still getting there, you know, they're still finding their feet in the comedy scene is probably lended itself to being good. And the fact that they're not necessarily trying to compete for the number one spot on the show, right? Because we saw it's Brendan's show. He's the top dog in the room. So I think that sort of helps with the balance. But the show isn't what it was, isn't it? There's no denying the show was better when Brian Callum was on it. Even towards the end when brian was being a real misery guts and they were sort of like quietly hating each other the show's not as good as it was prior it definitely isn't it probably will never return to that because you know things have just changed um i'm sure brendan's priorities have changed so has brian's he's basically been stung and burnt and basically he's, he's kind of been um embraced and then sort of like spat back out again isn't it it seems like no one that he sort of worked with on a big scale has kind of come out to back him and lend his support publicly in the way that you saw happen to, um, what's his face? Um, the guy that was on, oh, what's his bloody face? The first one, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter anyway. But no one's really supported Brian in a way that they probably, he probably would have envisioned to. So this is the show now, isn't it? T5K um, or The Fire and the Kids so as they've sort of like kind of rebranded it where Brendan Schaub sits there and lectures two black guys about why he's going to vote for Trump because um, he gives them good tax breaks so he can buy more Jordans and Porsches and he's really kind to the military, which he's never been in. Bizarre, bizarre times we live in, but 
what can we do in it? We've got to live the way we all live in it. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Is this a normal thing that people do? Just talk about politics openly with friends and stuff in general. Um, would you care if somebody you looked up to, you know, had opposing political views to you? I'd love to know in the comments down below.